how to DIY with Javier. Today we are working on the new AM5 motherboard by Asus ROG series. We're going to be starting out with RAM installation. start with bay 2 and 4 when you're using a dual channel setup. Since we're using two sticks. So you want to use two hands, make sure it clicks in and once you hear it click, you know it's in there securely, and then match up the second stick. Now they're both securely installed. We'll be using for CPU today the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. And for storage, we'll be using the Crucial P3 PM. Two terabyte NVMe generation four. All right now we're unboxing the CPU. The newer, higher end CPUs come in these pretty fancy boxes, so it took me a while to. <laughs> remove it f from it. So now you'll release the retention lever, lift up the socket cover, and we're gonna go ahead and match up the triangle pointing where, what way to install the CPU. These ones have, were a little bit harder to grip onto, these newer ones. So you just wiggle it just to make sure it's, you feel like it's fully secured in to the socket. Then you put down the retention lever and then pop off the motherboard CPU protector. Usually it pops off on its own, but I was having a little trouble. <laughs> so now that's securely set up. I'm gonna put that stuff, that stuff aside. So now we're gonna prep the NVMe section. We're gonna remove the provided heat sink. Requires two screws that you remove that are actually connected into the heat sink so it doesn't fly out on you. Make sure you peel off the protective seal of the heat sink thermal paste or thermal pads. They're a little tricky to peel off those protectors. It took me a little, little time. Just don't have fingernails. So get that prepped, set that aside. I've already unboxed the NVMe drive. It looks like a piece of gum. That's what these new drives, and it's called M2 format. And it's NVMe PCIe version 4. Make sure the notch matches the notch on the motherboard. Me a couple of tries for this motherboard, it was a little weird. These ones come with a built in latching system, so you just gotta 
get it into the slot and then use the little notch so you don't have to use those tiny crazy screws anymore on some of these newer boards. So now it is secured. Go ahead and put the heat sink back on. me a couple of tries because for some reason I just couldn't get those screws to match up. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and secure both sides. Let's get it feeded in and work on the other side now that I know the other one's in the hole. Just tighten up both to make sure they're flush against the motherboard to properly dissipate heat from the NVMe M2 drive. Right now that we're done with that, let's continue. So now I'm removing the old school AMD CPU cooler brackets. You need to remove these to install aftermarket CPU coolers. the cooler we'll be using it's very beefy and includes two full fan fans make sure you peel off the bottom there so you're not overheating never leave that little plastic cover over where the the block touches the cpu <laughs> all right now we're organizing the splitting cables for the fans and the rgb header cable
hang out with us while you prep this on the back end. All right, just getting out the mounting kits. There's so many pieces involved in that. It took me a little bit of time to figure out which kit was the, the proper one. Okay, now we're installing the plastic sleeves that are for the mounting system from Deep Cool. We're prepping it for an AMD AM5 chipset, an AM5 processor, the 7800X 3D. So now that the mounting bracket system is all nice and secured in, put in the little screws that hold the bracket mounting system. So there's a front, there's a top and bottom where you screw the CPU cooler on. So there's four total screws. I had to thumb screw it by hand first and then use the screwdriver to secure it. And with movie magic, you'll see the cooler install shortly. confirming the mounting kit that I used to make sure it's all properly installed. to securely mount the cooler. Securing in the mounting brackets now with the included thumb screws and then you use a screwdriver to make sure it torques it just the right tension. And I used to do, I mount them you know, opposite angles like you usually install most stuff for PCs is, so the tension is proper. You go from one angle to the opposite angle. Slowly torques each one and make sure they're secure. You don't want them to be loose in any way. All 
right? The cooler is on. Magic. He didn't see the stressful part it took me to, to, to melt them in, so kind of cut that part out because of a uh, still work in progress of video editing these. St steep learning curve for myself. Here we go with the LCD that's included that took me a couple tries to figure out which way it sits. There, I finally figured out which way it sits because the cables go into a certain bay. So I just peeled off the, the you know, normal cover on electronics stuff. Then I'm mounting the USB 2 cable to the bottom USB 2 header. And once this is going into the computer, I'm going to run it from behind the motherboard in, in the case that it's planning to be installed in. Right now we're just setting up it for uh, stress testing. Won't be installing this until the end of June. Just getting the CPU cooler and RGB stuff plugged in securely. CPU fan header. way to route the USB 2 header for temporary testing. Instead of just run it downwards instead of trying to do it a wrap around. Right now I'm gonna be installing the power supply cables to do the test batching and stress testing. So the 24 pin you plug in to the 24 pin, usually you'll know, and you just plug it in until you feel that click. Then you take the CPU cable that's labeled CPU and you plug that into the CPU section of the motherboard, which is usually just in that corner above where the CPU is installed. It's usually an eight pin or it comes with two sets of eight pins with some new boards. And just choose the front eight pin section if there's two of them. Once you have that, I just plugged in my little remote button system that I can have at like an external power button and restart that I can plug into test benching computers. So we did that. And then we started the batching, and that's it. Check out RayMonkeyTech.com.